We have here verse 21 of the seventh chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus is in a conversation with the religious leaders in which he's accused them of plotting his destruction. That brings out of the crowds who are apparently listening in as third parties some remark to the effect that they don't know why Jesus is apparently uh, overreacting that much, uh, saying in effect in the idiom of the day, you know, you must be nuts to be thinking that uh, they're harboring such harsh attitudes toward you. But of course, Jesus uh, is uh, aware of their hearts. He knows exactly what their plans are. And in that regard, his assessment of their intentions is quite correct. Jesus continues here in verse 21 to present the uh, insight that's necessary to understand what's going on. We have apocryphe from apocrinomai, deponent verb, I answer. This is the aorist, third person singular aorist, active indicative, Jesus, Jesus, the subject of the verb, Jesus answered. Kai apen, second aorist verb, lego, I say. This is the third person singular, aorist active indicative, out tois, to them, the dative singular masculine pronoun. So Jesus answered and said to them, hen, this is the word for one, the adjective one, in this case modifying ergon, <coughs> so one work, one work, epoyesa from poyeo, I make or I do. This is the first person singular, aorist active indicative of this contract verb. So one work I did, kai pontes. This is the nominative singular masculine of pon, which means all or every. In this case, it is uh, associated with the subject of this verb, thaumadzeta, which is the word you marvel. So we'd put it together all of you marvel. So one work I did and all of you marvel. This is Jesus' response now to the religious leaders, although it may also involve some uh, response to the crowds as well. What's interesting about the comment is that, of course, in this particular chapter, we don't have any reference of Jesus performing a miracle, and so we don't know quite what he's referring to. Best guess is he's actually referring to the healing of the man who was uh, healed in chapter 5, back in uh, the uh, situation of the man who was lame there by the pool of Bethesda. And at that point, uh, it seems that that's what is in view. It seems like it's rather a remote remark. But at the same time, we know that that did, in fact, provoke a rather negative reaction because of the apparent violation of Sabbath. Now Jesus has come back for the first time, even after all these many months, and the harboring of malicious intent has not gone away, that they're like before him with a sort of hair trigger, you know, just waiting for him to do something wrong so that they can mobilize their uh, angry attitudes against him in some kind of destructive fashion. And the fact that he stands up now and teaches in the temple, as he has been doing, appears to be the thing that's going to trigger that reaction from them. And thus the reason that he appeals back to this moment of something that had taken place sometime earlier.